Thank you so much, I'm happy to be here. Um, uh, I'll try to go through my presentation as quick as, as I can. Um, Tigali is literally uh, the new city on the block. It was founded in 1907. Uh, so 111 years ago, there was no city. Um, and now we're seeing um, a type of thinking that uh, questions why the city was founded in the first place, the history that we've gone through that definitely defines us at the moment, and what we can do about that. So a quick brief history, uh, after 1907 when it was founded, 55 years later, uh, it was handed over from the colonial powers to the new government, the new city government. And um, 32 years after that, the city of Tigari was a center of one of these uh, centuries mass atrocities, the 1994 genocide against the Tutsis. So because of that history, uh, the city or, and the forces that shapes what the city becomes are unconventional from most uh, cities around the world. So to give a little bit of context, um, the country itself, Rwanda, is about 12.2 million people uh, and uh, estimated at 493 inhabitants per square kilometer, Rwanda is the most highly, de is the highest densely populated country on mainland Africa, which means all the problems that we talk about, uh, which pro all problems that are population growth related in Africa, we are more likely to experience them in Rwanda first before anybody else. Two, um, the Tigali population is estimated at 1.3 million at the moment and is estimated to reach 4 million by 2040. So obviously it's growing faster the boundary of our countries and our city is not growing, which means appropriate urbanization and densification is actually our own. So talking about recent development of the country, um, the GDP per capita in the country has grown fivefold since 1994, which is a great thing. Um, the country is uh, aiming to become a middle class income country by 2050. Again, this is, comes from that legacy of having an incredible amount of people and not much land, and therefore not much diversified activities that can generate income. Um, the country has done tremendous reforms so it can become attractive to investments, both local and foreign investments. And some of these are seen in the rankings of the World Bank, so IMF and these other uh, big financing lending uh, 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 institutions. So, what does that mean in terms of physical growth of the city? This map represents uh, a span of 20 years of the city. Uh, the light dots shows uh, the built area where people are growing. This is a city in 1960 was estimated to have 6,000 people and at the moment is 1.3 million. So there's a lot of work to be done from basic infrastructure that supports this population growth that obviously with the recent history I just spoke about, we did not prioritize. And there's a lot of trying to understand how the cohabitation between the land and the people and the environment and the, the finances that some people spoke early happen. So uh, very quickly talking about now what is shaping the thinking on the city at the moment. Uh, back in the days, about 20 uh, years ago or so, um, the country came up with this city master plan and a vision for the country, Vision 2050. And I'll say those are the two main things that govern us our current thinking, both political, uh, socioeconomic, uh, way of thinking about the Tiari city, and therefore informing its infrastructure development. Those documents or those strategic, strategic, strategic plans were mainly driven by three main agendas that are, are, are called political, economical, and social agenda in that particular order, and I'll explain why. Political is because we, um, after the history I just explained again, it's important for our country to reinvent what the country is and is known for. I think most of you uh, who have not been to Tigari uh, or to Rwanda yet, still have the horrific images of the 1994 genocide. And therefore, 
the country has made a conscious decision to make Tigari City um, the hope or the beacon of that hope that we are not only that. We can be also a, 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 a different city, a better city for everyone in the world. The economic agenda also uh, comes from this need to attract foreign investments into the country to elevate the quality of life and therefore uh, offering a better future for the Rwanda uh, residents and the Tigari residents. The social agenda comes from, again, that history, but also the resulting effect of that economic uh, influx into the country. How do you create a city that can accommodate uh, that diversity in people, not just from the ethnic, ethnic people in the country, but also from around the world. We are a country that is open for business, if you, you are not aware, and as my um, civic duty requires, I invite you all to visit Rwanda and do investments in the country. So I'll talk very quickly about uh, some of the projects that are excite me as, uh, as an architect that are taking shape in the city of Tigari that I think are important for people to know. So the polycentricity of the city. Uh, this is both a result of the geography of the city where uh, the master plan that was developed in 2013, uh, personally I have some uh, critics of the master plan, but one of the things that does well is decongest the central business districts and restoring the natural corridors between these top of the hills that this polycentric, polycentric uh, part of the city can occupy. Uh, how we uh, finance that or how we counter effects of gentrification that we know most cities are struggling with, it's another debate maybe for the next conference. Um, challenging the city uh, space use in different type of forms. Um, people talk about public uh, spaces in cities in Africa not being there. Obviously, the way the city is formed at the moment, the land ownership structure, uh, the investments, don't allow us to have large public spaces. How do we share the resources we have and create that uh, public use uh, on, uh, in specific nodes on the time continuum? is something that I think is innovative, and if we go through a couple of iterations, we could be on something uh, very good. Uh, expanding mobility beyond the, the motorized transportation that we're all uh, familiar with, that we inherit from uh, the typical American cities. Um, the zebra crossing was just black and white uh, two, two months ago, and I think we noticed that drivers were not stopping, so we added the raid to make sure they understand it's <laughs> Um, it's, uh, it's serious. So obviously that, that also requires some cultural shift in people's minds, but I think we're pushing those boundaries as well. The other thing is elevating expectations of city dwellers on the urban quality life. I'm sure all of you have heard this sentence when someone does something stupid and say, this is Africa. I hate that sentence so much. And I think this is one of the ways where we could uh, start that cultural shift where people change expectations on what an African city is or should be or must be. Uh, the last uh, project that I, I'm uh, excited about is uh, access to basic city living benefits. Obviously, there are so many that the city has to provide. The means are limited, time is running, but the basic one at the moment that is being implemented is safety. We have many people who live in unsafe places. One thing I did not mention in statistical data is Tigari is 730 square kilometers. About 30% of that land is not buildable because of high slopes. So how do people who have unofficially occupied those spaces move out of those spaces so that natural habitat can be restored, but also those people can live uh, safely? So finally, this is my last slide. I know I've exceeded my time. But I strongly believe that the country or the governance of the country is doing a lot to create the identity of the city and promote it externally. However, I still believe as a resident of the city that the local ownership of the identity of the city is still not there yet and it's yet to be created. Obviously, this is a result of generations that we've had that before, uh, basically their homes was rural and they came to the city looking for uh, opportunities. And therefore, I think there is an opportunity for the new generation of people who are just as well as to 
refine and redefine what the city maybe can be in Africa, and TBI can be the first example of that. Thank you.